What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we saw the NASDAQ 100 leading the way and we are starting to see some sector rotation. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, so on SPY we did go up 0.22% today and we did break and close over that next price target at 425. So we can definitely see the bull market continues to charge on and we still have that full bull trend with the bullish price action. So now that we're above 425, we are getting into that higher risk territory as we continue towards the next price target at 430. Keep in mind from today's close to the next price target is about 1% more upside and you have to decide if that's worth the risk. Remember, we have FOMC meeting going into this week and we have quad witching on Friday and there's definitely going to be plenty of sector rotation. Now, sector rotation itself is not that risky of an event, but there will be a lot of money rolling around and switching from sector to sector and that is very likely to cause a lot of volatility and there could be some panic selling mixed in there because there will be a lot of people trying to figure out what's going on. So overall, now that we're above 425, do understand risk is increasing just like markets always are, riskier as they continue to go higher. So define your risk at one of these support levels and now that we're above 425, that is one of the levels you can set your risk at. The stronger support levels to set risk will be at 423 and 420 and that critical 20 simple moving average is now sitting just above 419. So know your risk and don't be afraid to be a bull in a bull market, but just understand that if we do start to see closes below these support levels, that could mean that the market is rolling over. The stronger levels to watch for if we do see a rollover are going to be the gap closes at 411 and 400. From today's close to close that gap at 411 is about a 3.5% pullback, and to the gap close at 400 is about a 5.8% pullback. So that's where I would define your risk going long on this market, and I do think this FOMC meeting is going to be one of the more important meetings. Typically, these meetings have been a whole lot of nothing, but this meeting could be when the Fed finally has to start talking about tapering and how they're going to treat inflation. That could cause the stock market to react, so make sure that you are controlling your risk to the downside. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we went up almost 1% today, and we did break and close to a brand new all-time high. Remember, we had that price target at 342, and we did close well above that at 344.5. Our next price target above is going to be right around 346, and if we can break and close over 346, the triple Qs will be looking ultra bullish, and we will have another price target way up here in the 350s. But right now, don't forget what's in front of us, and that's still 346, and we still need to see price action breaking over that level. Just like with SPY, we have a full bull trend with bullish price action, so there's nothing to be concerned about right now with the price action. The trend is very strongly bullish and we have positive slopes on all of the moving averages. So on the triple Qs, look for support at 342, 339, 336.9, and 334.6. The 20-simple moving average is now sitting right around 333. Keep in mind that if the market does start to roll over, if you're waiting until it gets to the 30-simple moving average from today's close, that is about a 3.3% drop. We do have the gap close below at 323, which is about a 6.2% drop. And the gap down here around 315 is about an 8.5% drop. So remember that those gaps typically do get filled. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So define your risk and understand those are the levels that we could likely go to if the market does roll over. So you do want to watch all these critical support levels very closely. But just like I said before, the market is bullish until we start closing below some of these critical supports. And we just have not yet seen that. On the Dow Jones, we dropped about a quarter percent and the Dow Jones by far is looking very weak. We see a lot of money leaving the Dow and it does look like it is going into the tech sector. We see the Dow closing right on top of the 20 simple moving average, so we still haven't seen a breakdown in the support level that is critical, but we're starting to see the 5 EMA getting ready to cross below the 13 EMA. So on the Dow Jones, watch the critical support at 344.3 and if that breaks down, we could easily come back down and retest the 50 EMA, which is right around 340. Below the 50 EMA, we'd be looking for support at 336.7 and the gap closed down here right around 331.6. From today's close to close that gap is about a 3.6% drop. So watch that gap down here very closely if we do start to break down below the 20 simple moving average. Upside resistance is still at 348 and if we break over that, we're looking for 350. On the Russell 2000, we dropped about 0.29% today and the Russell 2000 yet again failed to break and close over that resistance at 233. We're still finding support right around 230 and we're still holding up above a positive sloping 5 EMA. The Russell 2000 is still in a full bull trend, so watch support levels at 230, 227.5 and the gap close down here is going to be right around 223.7. Upside resistance is 233 and on a break and close over that level, the next price target is above at 237. On ARK-K, we saw a bullish day today going up 1.9%, but 
which does tell us that we could be seeing money rotating into these tech and growth companies because we are seeing the triple Qs and RK doing the best today. We do see RK closing above the 50 EMA for three days in a row, which is bullish price action development, and we are starting to see the moving averages crossing back above the 50 EMA. The 5 EMA has crossed back above the 50, and if we can hold up above the price action here, we could see the 13 crossing over next. So right now, if you're long RK, you can set your risk on a close below the 50 EMA or on a close below the 20 simple moving average down here around 110. Overall, RK is starting to look more bullish, and the next resistance level to watch out for is going to be right here at 120. If we break over 120, we have a resistance trend line right around 121, and above 121, we'll be looking for 127. So watch downside support at 114, 112, and 110, and understand that RK is starting to look bullish as long as we continue to close over the 50 EMA. On the VIX, we see the VIX going up today 4.7%, but still holding up below that support level at 16.65, which is now acting as resistance. Overall, that is a bullish indication because the VIX is a measure of fear, and we still see fear going lower. So overall, do understand this could be a volatile couple of weeks with quad witching and the FOMC meeting, but as long as we don't see the VIX getting back above 18.2 or back above 20, we're not expecting to see a major correction or a major sell-off. Volatility between about 16 to 18.2 all the way up to about 19 is typically normal volatility, and that doesn't mean we're going to see a major correction. If we start to see the VIX spiking above 20, that would be a warning sign that we are going to see a deeper correction in the stock market. On gold, we did drop down to the 50 EMA and it did look like that level did hold up as support. So continue to watch the 50 EMA at gold, which is right around 1844. And we do have upside resistance now at 1876. Gold did lose the full bull trend, so it needs to get back above the 20 simple moving average at 1889 to try to go back into a bull market. But right now, as long as gold's holding up above the 50 EMA, it can consolidate and get ready for another bull run. So watch the price targets at 1876 and the 20 simple moving average at 1889. On silver, we see a different picture with silver finding support above the support trend line at 27.6 and closing back above the 5 EMA. Silver is still holding up above its 20 simple moving average at 27.8, and we do have the breakout level right around 28.3 with a price target above there at 29. On Bitcoin, we're currently up over 3%, and Bitcoin is currently trading above that critical resistance level at 39,000. If Bitcoin can close back above 39,000, that will be a bullish price action close, and we'll be looking for Bitcoin to try to get back over the 50 EMA next. The next critical resistance level is at 43,000, but we still need to hold up above 39,000, so don't look too far ahead. If Bitcoin does break back below 39,000, we'll be looking for support to hold right around 36 to 37,000. If Bitcoin can continue to stay above these moving averages, it can start building up a bullish trend, and it could try to go back into a bull market. So watch the critical resistance at 43,000 and the critical support at 39,000. On Amazon, we had a bullish day today going up over 1.1% and we are seeing Amazon respecting the breakout of the resistance trend line and we did see that level back tested as support twice. Look for the upside price targets next at 3,400 and 3,458 with the downside support at 3,335 and the 50 EMA down here right around 3,261. Amazon does look like it is going back into a bull market and it just needs that 20 simple moving average to cross back above the 50 EMA, which should be crossing very soon. On Tesla, we're starting to see a bullish breakout, but we still have resistance at 626 and that resistance level is still being respected. Tesla needs a break above 626 and then retest the 50 EMA at 637. And just like with RK, we need to see Tesla getting back over the 50 EMA. So if you're going long Tesla here, know that your risk is on a close below 594 because below 594, we could be coming back down to 546. However, if we start breaking back above 626 and back above 637, we could see Tesla going back into a bull market. So those are your critical resistance and support levels to pay very close attention to on Tesla. On Apple, we were almost up 2.5% today, and we are starting to see Apple have that bullish breakout. Remember, we needed a price action close back over 128, and today we did close over 130. So Apple is looking bullish, but we now need to see this level acting as support to see Apple continue to climb higher. So critical support on Apple is at 128, and if we break back below 128, we can still find support off the 50 EMA at 127. Back below 127, we're back to the critical support at 126. Right now, Apple is looking bullish, and it is starting to break out of these critical resistance levels, so watch above for the new resistance at 131 and 135. Overall, Apple still needs to get its bullish trend back, but the price action is looking bullish, and it is starting to break out. On the financial sector, we dropped over 1% today, so we are starting to see money leaving the financial sector and starting to rotate into other sectors. 
This is completely normal for a quad witching week, so continue to look for yesterday's winners to be today's losers as money moves from the winners and goes into the next strongest sectors. On the industrial sector, we dropped about a half a percent and we still see selling in the industrial sector as well. Look for support at the 50 EMA, and this is more proof that we are seeing a sector rotation. On the healthcare sector, we were flat on the day, but we still see a bull trend and we still see bullish price action on the healthcare sector. So far, we don't see money rotating out of the healthcare sector, so that is a bullish indication. On the energy sector, we dropped 0.43% and the energy sector still has a bullish trend and we're still holding up above the 13 EMA. Watch to see if the energy sector is going to see any more selling or if it's just cooling off before it continues to try to go higher. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, we're definitely continuing this bullish price action with the bullish trend, so there's no reason to be bearish in this market. But do understand there is risk with quad witching and there's going to be a lot of money moving around and we should be seeing a sector rotation. So far, it does look like money is leaving the financials and the industrials and it is going into the tech and growth names. That's bullish for the NASDAQ 100 and that's bullish for RK. However, don't forget that the S&P 500 is over 30% tech, so it still could be that the tech sector goes higher and it continues to drag the S&P 5 higher with it. As long as we don't see too much selling in financials and industrials, the tech sector can help the S&P 500 continue to go higher. So while we do have a price target above at 430, do understand that we are in this high risk area and we could see a correction or a pullback at these levels going into quad witching. But overall, there's nothing to fear as long as you know where your risk levels are and you watch the support very closely. So watch the critical support levels going into quad witching and this could be a very bullish event if we don't have any bearish news at the FOMC meeting. Also remember on the Stocks Journal Discord, I'm doing intraday updates and analysis to help you navigate this market and always stay on the right side of the trade. I'm also bringing a lot of brand new trade ideas to help you crush this market. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Discord, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.